Welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie. Did you know you could follow me on Instagram? www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. See what I'm up to. Don't forget to hit subscribe and don't forget to share the Instagram address and my YouTube channel with your crafty friends. Today it's index index card a day. ICAD number one. This is entitled Inspiration Exists. Welcome to Index Card a Day 2018. This is Index Card number one. Please go and check out my Getting Ready for Index Card a Day 2018 if you want to get some helpful hints on how you can make sure that this is a successful and wonderful experience for you. So as I discussed in that video, I'm going to feature and use the different techniques that I have in my mixed media technique tag video series. So I will put a link to that instructional video. It's a full length instructional videos. There's lots of information on each one. I use the try to do the same technique using different mediums. I try to do different variations each for each technique. I make three, four different tags to give you a whole bunch of ideas uh, for what you can do for creating your background. So index card of day number one, I'm going to flash back to uh, mixed media technique tag number one and that was creating your own designer tissue paper and here is the stash of the papers that I created in that video. And here are the three tags and variations that I did in that video. This one I used, um, I did the stamping, I made my designer tissue paper out of pattern material. These two were made on, um, one was on tissue paper, one was on um, the throwaway when you peel back um, from a napkin, this, the secondary layer or third layer and one was just tissue paper. This one I put color underneath the tag. This one I put color on top of what I collaged down. So we're just going to get started with that. I have a few ideas of where what I want to do. Keeping in mind my idea is to use the stash. So if you're creating a background like this, your stamps, your designer paper is going to look different than mine that's perfectly great. You may use a different color scheme than I, and you may have a different focal point, but you're still working along with me. The goal here is to create a background using designer tissue paper that you created yourself. So I'm just going to, you know, I've got some that's just music paper, and I did some that had themes. This was a road trip. I'm sure we'll do a travel or explore. You know what? I'm kind of liking this one. Some of this tissue paper when I stamp, this is just, you know, the tissue paper that you get in gift bags. You know, it's wrinkled. Um, it doesn't really matter. I kind of like this one. It's kind of general. So what I'm going to do, this is a gessoed card because I pre-gesso all of that. And I'm just going to use um, Mod Podge matte. Typically I, t I use matte finish for all of my, um, if it's gel medium or, so I'm just going to put a coat of this on and once that's dry I will put, I kind of like the, the bold colors here. So again, go and check out, if you're a beginner, you may want to check out the technique tag video for more detailed instruction on how to do that and how to get those variations and, you know, I kind of pass along, you know, tips and hints in those videos. So I'm just making sure all the corners 
are done and then I'm just going to put a layer of this. Now as much as I'm trying to get all the wrinkles and bumps out, I'm not too worried. It's just going to add texture um, in this. We're going to keep it simple. We're not going to put 55 different techniques into the one video. Making designer paper is a great way to utilize all those stamps you have, even if they're tiny little stamps like this star one. I thought of an idea, if you're doing the index card a day series, what you could do is just during that creative time, just create the backgrounds. Don't worry about the focal points, don't just use create the backgrounds utilizing the different techniques. And then at the end of it, you're going to have a whole bunch of backgrounds that are ready to go. So And I typically just save this all my little bits. I don't throw away anything. It goes into a plastic pouch like this and I keep in my big blue box or in my filing cabinet even the little bits because sometimes you just want a little bit if you're doing an ATC you don't have a lot of surface area or you can just utilize bits and pieces you, here I've chosen to cover the whole iCAD or my card my base but you don't have to so I'm just going to give this a dry and pick out some colors and we'll be back. So I want to push this pattern back just a smidge. So what I'm going to do is just use some white gesso. And I'm not even going to be too concerned about, and I'm just spraying it water. I could just thin this down. And that's just going to push the back, push it back a little bit more because I'm going to add color to the forward layer. Okay, so we're going to reset, and it just wasn't going what I had in my head, wasn't what I was seeing. So. I think it got too blended. If you're panicking because all that is gone, some of the patterning back there, the goal is not necessarily to have all of it showing up. It's just going to be, it's just one layer. It's a quick way of getting a layer without getting out all those stamps again, right? And then you add the texture to looking yummy on here so we're going to give that a dry that's more what now this combination this bright salmon corally color and deep violet absolutely yummy when it mixes but if you don't try things you won't find that kind of magic color combo. 
The only way that you are going to get better at mixing colors and selecting colors is by actually doing the work. There is no shortcut. Watching all of my videos is not going to do it for you. I can give you tips and hints, but you need to step out and do the work. So I'm going to put some more of those stars back on here and I'm just going to put that there. Of course I have way too much. So I'm going to get the coffee filter here ready to go because to clean up paint this will be used on future iCADs. So I'm just stamping. You could stamp with a with with ink if you like, but don't forget to stamp off the page. And sometimes what I'm using here is there were stars in the background, there were the other thing, the, the circles in the background, and I'm using that as a jumping off point. To continue. But when you start with something, you it already pushes you forward. I'm liking the look of that, but I'm thinking I want some white. So I'm just going to do some white to just lighten this up a bit. to matter how often I clean my studio it just seems to be a disaster area all the time so I'm going to take this and I'm going to edge my card in there I Feeling the need for some splatters. I want some black. This is just black acrylic paint. I cleaned out the tube. I cut it open and I just put it in one of these containers so be so while I uh, I'm going to have text and the text is going to be ooh, a little bit of black.
Okay. I'm going to dry this and clean up a bit and I'll be back. Okay, so everything's dry. And I had a couple big splashes here and I didn't worry about it because I kind of thought I was going to be using one of these Julie Nutting dolls. And I did create a video um, showing how I paint and clothe and, and do these up. So I'll put a link to that video. Now, once you've created your background, you can pick any focal point. It doesn't matter. I'm thinking I'm liking the yellow hair better and stuff. And as usual, the feet of the girl are is going to go. And I don't mind if she kind of goes off there. So now I'm going to look for a quote. Now, I have my quotes binder and I've typed out, this was Two years ago I typed out a bunch of quotes, found them on Pinterest. If you go to my Pinterest board, inspirational quotes, you can see all those. They're, you know, free for you to, to take and type them up. I played with the fonts and um, did that. So I have a couple choices here and it kind of goes along with what I've been saying in the startup video. You know, I made I made this. This is one of my favorite quotes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And you know, so that I'm trying to I'm I know I'm going to have to cut these apart, but I'm trying to just visualize this. So these quotes, once I get them to this point, once I take them out of the pages in the binder, you know, I have them in various states. I'll put them in tiny Ziploc bags you can buy where the quote is and then once I have that actually I'm liking this quote inspiration exists but it has to find you working so basically you need if you if you expect to get better if you expect to learn how to do things you just need to do that and that's kind of the whole purpose of the index card a day challenge is to get you to create to be creating and it's giving you a small surface it's not even too too much too precious you know i'm doing it on recycled um cards um flash cards you know an index card um it's going to zoom in here a little bit to give you a closer up. And one of the challenges of working on a small surface is, you know, if you're putting a longer quote, you might have time. Now I could put it on top of the girl. So I'll just play with this. And you want, I, I, when I build this up, I kind of want your eye to go down. And I want to edge them with the black archival. Now you could use a makeup sponge. I'm using this as a cut and dry foam. I'm going to give this a try to see how it works. But you don't need to go buy specialty products for this purpose, is what I want you to say. So I'm going to finish this, but I think what I'm going to do is just edge this. I'm thinking it just needs a little bit more black. And quite often you're seeing me doing two colors, the darkest from the pick from the background and then the black or a metallic. Ooh, we don't have any gold on here yet. Oh no. <laughs> So if you're just doing the index card a day and you just want to create backgrounds, you can stop here.
Okay, so while I use Mod Podge in an earlier stage underneath the paints, I tend to use um, matte gel on the upper sections. I just find that it finishes it off just that little bit better. Um, okay, we're just going to put that on. And it will not shine. It's very matte. I find even sometimes the Mod Podge matte will be a little shiny so if I just put it here and I don't put it on the whole thing it tends it may shine and you may be able to see it it's not a look I like so I'm, I'm avoiding it by using the matte gel at this point in time but if all you have is matte Mod Podge matte then use it this isn't about finding reasons why you can't do something it's about using what you have and just having fun and learning and that's, you know, if you're watching me, that's going to be the theme. Oops, I lifted some of the paint there. Okay, so I'm going to line these up off screen because you don't need to see me diddle daddle. And we'll come back. Okay, didn't turn the camera on. So I'm just didn't attempt to put these straight. So I'm going to have them kind of askew. I'm doing that very deliberately because it's easier than trying to make everything line up. It'll be very obvious if you don't get it lined up. But this way it's, you know, it's going to look. And then I just kind of get underneath. Ha! Trust me, I get underneath. <laughs> and then I put it on top as well. So it has to find... There. And just put it like that underneath and then push it down into the gel medium. So the pattern paper here, the designer pattern paper that I created, you can see little bits of it peeking through. It's not in your face. It's not a focal point. It's just one layer. But what it did, it also inspired me to use stars, to use those circles. So it helped guide my journey on this card. So getting the Julie Nutting dolls prepared, I did, you know, kind of a mass production of them. Um, that's just helping to make this speedier. If I had to stop and, and do that video and it would, you know, would have taken a whole lot longer to get this all done. Now I'm going to reach for one of my favorite tools here, my fine liner applicator. And I think it's almost time for me to clean out this acrylic paint. It's been in a fine liner applicator for a while. I'm just going to hmm. Put a sketchy border around. Being careful not to put my wrist in it.
and there you go. Index card a day, number one, done. Okay, so I'm just back here before I cleaned up everything. What I'm just going to do, now if you have an iCAD that you particularly like, you know, and there in the past there have been some that I really like. You can use this as inspiration for making an art journal page or a canvas, but in of itself, this is a little piece of mixed media mini. It, it you know, and it you can put a hole hole punch it and turn it into a bookmark. You can put a gel print on the back or scrapbook paper if that's if you've got a whole stash of that, match it, put glue that on. You can paint it um, a solid color, being careful not to get it on the front. That's my least favorite way of doing it. So I probably, because I have tons of gel prints, I put a gel print on it. So it could be a bookmark, it could be a thank you card, then you can, you know, just write on the back and make it a thank you card. You can also add, get these uh, peel and stick magnetic pages, and I'm going to put a link to that in the video as long, along with, with other things that I've used that just in case you're looking for them, I'm giving you a place to look. Um, but these magnetic pages, then you can pretty much turn anything into a fridge magnet or a filing cabinet magnet. Uh, there's lots of things that, you know, this can go in the front of the dishwasher. Um, different different places that you can so you can do that. As we get going through the iCAD videos, I'll give you some other ideas of ways that you can then take your little mixed media mini piece of art that you like and frame it and utilize it. I kind of gave a sneak peek in the getting started one and I have some more examples to share with you as we go. I also um, when this is dry, I would let this dry for, for a week or so before before doing it, but I will put this Liquitex per Gloss Medium and Varnish on top and coat it. Would I do that to all my iCADs? No. These are just the ones that I'm going to bump up to another level. That